Okay guys, today's video and training is going to be focused in on the in-home presentation, more specifically the stoplight system. This is the method that I use. It is one of two ways that we suggest you uh, run your appointments and use an in-home presentation. The other one is using the pitch book, which we're also going to have a video for that uh, as well. Either one, find the one that works best for you that you're most comfortable with and, and do whichever one is getting you the best results. The stoplight system is what worked best for me, so that's what we're going to cover today. I'm going to enlarge the screen here. Maybe that'll make it a little easier for you guys to see. Um, the first thing that you're going to want to do, obviously, when you have your appointment scheduled, you're in the field. Hopefully, you have quite a few scheduled uh, in a row. I always encourage agents you know, to try and have five, six, seven appointments scheduled for the day. That way, when you're out there, you can just go one after the other. It's a busy day, but you're, you allow yourself to kind of build some momentum. Most of the work has already been done, and that's scheduling the appointments. As long as they're solid appointments, all you guys have to do is show up, and when you're with the client, understand that the main focus is to bring out emotion. And that's really what the stoplight system is designed to do, is to help you bring out emotion in an easier way, or a way that, at least for me, I was more comfortable doing. We show up to the appointment. Uh, you have your quotes already ready. You have your paperwork, your applications, your brochures. You were totally prepared. Your manager should have helped you with that. That way you're confident and you're competent when you show up to your, your set of appointments that day. You walk through the door and here we go. The first thing that we're going to want to do, guys, is for five to ten minutes. And I always say, look, time it. Time it if you need to. But for five to ten minutes, we need to be focusing on anything and everything other than insurance. Building rapport, connecting with our clients. There's that old saying, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Spend this time building rapport. Find things that you can relate to your clients about, that there are they're, they're connectors. If, if you like to talk about family, talk to them about their family, how they met, where they're from, where they moved from, their kids, their grandkids, do they like to travel. Find things in the house maybe that you can relate to. There's a lot of things that if we can just open our eyes and, and kind of take a, an, an initiative to look for, we'll find connections with our clients. And, and I think that goes a long way. But build rapport for five to ten minutes, then immediately head for the kitchen table. I'd never you know, recommend doing an appointment inside the living room. It's kind of ridiculous filling out paperwork on a recliner. It just doesn't look very professional. Typically the kitchen uh, table is a place of business. That's where they get a lot of their bill they pay a lot of their bills. It's an easier place for us to get everybody to sit down and kind of relax and and to talk about what we need to talk about. So head for the kitchen table. All right, now we're going to go through the stoplight system. The first thing that you guys want to understand is it is all about emotion. $5 for something that they don't want is too much money. You're going to hear us say that all the time. The last thing that we want to talk to them about is price. Only after they've thoroughly convinced you on how important this is should you then go into the prices. The first stoplight is why am I here? And the stoplight system works exactly like a normal street light system would work. Green light answers mean you can go forward. Yellow, slow down. Red, you're dead. You gotta come to a complete stop. You gotta re-ask the question. Their answers will determine whether or not you can move forward. The first stoplight question is, why am I here? Why did you fill this out? I hand them a copy of the lead and I'm trying to figure out what they were so concerned about when they read the letter, signed it, sent it in, and then invited me over. That's important. That's when their strongest buying emotional need was, right? I mean, that's when they first realized this is something I should look into. So let's figure out what it was that triggered that. Let's make sure that if there's a husband and a wife that they've both read the letter and they're both on the same page. So a good answer would be something like, I want to make sure you know my family's taken care of. I don't want to leave my family a burden or a debt. A bad answer would be something like, I just wanted more info. I wanted a brochure. I wanted a price. That's a weak answer. That is, There's no emotion behind that. We got to dig a little deeper. We got to figure out something like, you know, well, what exactly did you want a brochure on? What were you hoping this insurance would do? Did you have a price in mind? when you sent in this letter and, and I just try to re-ask the question and that's exactly what the stoplight system is meant to do it's more of a question based type sales approach why am I here why did you fill this out and keep asking the questions that you want answers to uh, until you feel good about the responses second stoplight so let's say you feel good you have a good green light there the second question st second stoplight is now how important is that to you maybe this is the point in the appointment where you're also going to ask them who would be responsible to cover for covering the costs of your final expenses? Sometimes I'll turn over that bronze, silver, gold sheet 
and I'll break I'll give them the breakdown of what the average costs of funeral expenses are these days over eight thousand dollars so I'll ask them these kinds of questions just to establish the you know some importance there I'll ask them how important is it to you to make sure that you don't leave your son your daughter your spouse with that eight thousand dollar burden extremely important I don't want to leave my family with any debt I don't want them to have to pass the hat or dip into their own pockets and take money away from their own kids or grant my grandkids that's the kind of answer we're looking for. If they come up with something else, like, you know, I already have life insurance, this isn't that important to me, well, now there's a hurdle that we need to address. Maybe we try to get them to understand that this is different than life insurance. Life insurance is designed to replace an income. Final expense is meant to cover your final expenses. You wouldn't want to use your income replacement to cover your final expenses, just like you wouldn't want your final expense coverage to replace your income. I also often, too, find guys that 80% uh, of the time what people think they have is not what they have. Or B, they don't have nearly enough to begin with. So I often tell people, look, I can help you with life insurance. I'm not here to talk to you about that. I want to help you with this final expense coverage. This kind of coverage is going to last forever. Whereas a lot of times with your life insurance, that could run up. What happens if it runs out and you're still here, right? Hopefully that's the plan that you don't need to use your life insurance. Well, you better have some final expense coverage in place. That's what I'm here to talk to you about. Not about getting one or the other, but hopefully about getting both and more of both helping them with their life insurance maybe replacing it or maybe getting some additional final expense coverage to supplement their life insurance plan so either way if we uh, handle the objections there we feel good it's a green light the third and final stoplight is what would happen to your family if you did not have this coverage it's not always a comfortable question to ask guys but it is important so let's make sure we're asking it if you don't feel comfortable asking them this question let them know that John listen I'm not really comfortable asking this question but it's kinda of my job I know it's not the funnest thing in the world to talk about but I need to know what would happen to your family what would you guys do if something happened to you and you did not have this coverage explain to me what that picture would look like Mary what would you do what would the kids do John and honestly, guys, sometimes they don't have an answer for it, but what I do find happens is they think about it, maybe for the first time. They think about, wow, what, what kind of burden this would mean to my family. I don't know what they would do, but either way, it's not a scenario I want to happen. It's an important question, and it's one that we can't ignore. Uh, what I find happens is by asking, why am I here, it, it sets a good tone. Then by establishing importance, by them establishing importance, they're kind of selling us on why they need it. And then by asking them what would happen if they don't do it, all it does is solidify the sale. Honestly, before you guys show prices, the sale should already be made, but you need to bring out emotion. The easiest way for me to do that was by asking sometimes pointed questions, but questions that, you know, I knew ultimately were going to get them to sell me on why they need it. Why am I here? What's going to happen if you don't do this? What do you hope your family uses that money for? How much do you want to leave your family? What kind of legacy do you want to leave them? Do you want to leave them enough? Not nearly enough? Barely enough? More than enough? We all have two options, guys. We can leave our family nothing. That's free for you. It's expensive for them, but it's free for you. Or we can leave them as much as you can comfortably afford each month. That's what I'm hoping you go with. That's what I want to help you qualify for. So those are some of the questions that I ask. The point being, guys, ask more questions. Selling is not telling. We've all heard that saying before, right? So you're not going to talk them into doing it. They need to talk you into why you should show them prices and help them qualify for something. That's what we're going for. It's a little different than the pitch book. If you like this method, go with it. If you want more training on it, make sure you're plugging into our sales calls. Uh, and then, you know, compare it to the pitch book. Try both methods. See which one works best for you guys. Best of luck out there this week. And, uh, you know, put this into play as many times as you can. I think you'll find, you know, quite a bit of success. Good luck.